so for those who don't know me, my name is Devant, and I have the privilege of leading this church with my wife, Nicolene, and my kids, and all the wonderful people in this place. God is really faithful, and He's just been opening doors for us. I mean, the school, guys, can I tell you, the school is amazing. The school is really amazing. We've got so much favor here, and it's, God is just opening doors, and it's awesome to see. So we're going to really honor them for that. So, this past week we were obviously not here. Some of you guys know that we weren't here. We were down in, up, not down, up in Johannesburg. Uh, thank goodness it was only for three days. We managed to escape again and come back. <coughs> and then, <laughs> but uh, the reason why we were there is because we, we connected with the NCMI team that we belong to as, as a body. Um, and so we had a, a national gather, gathering of all the elders in one building from South Africa. There was over 800, 900 people there. It was really cool. And so we had to spend, or we got to spend three days there. And so we had conversations with guys and just, you know, they had, you know, some of the guys sharing the testimony of what's been happening in, at their churches and what God's been doing and some of the stuff that they came against and some strategy and also from the lead guy, um, you know, hearing his heart, Tyron, hearing his heart and the heart of NCMI. And so you pick a country, you pick a nation, and there's an NCMI church there, which is quite cool. All right. There's a video there. Uh, it says NCMI. Don't you want to play us that video, please? There's a short snippet of what we got up to. Can you see it? No, not the guy. There's a video. That, we're going to be talking about that guy just now. It should, be, it should be under the first tab. So under welcome, under the countdown timer, there's a video there. Please play that video. So just some photos and man, you know it's good worship when you step into a place and there's violins and saxophones and come on, those are some good times, guys. Some good times. But um, yeah, and so it's so good to be part of this team. Um, like I said, any country and there is an NCMI church. I think the only place that there's still some place they need churches. So if you're keen on finding churches in Asia, come chat to us. <laughs> come and chat to us. But uh, the heart of NCMI is to plant churches and to get the gospel out there. Right? The Great Commission. Isn't it? And then we add the Great Command. Of love your brother. Love your neighbor. Love yourself. Amen? Cool. So, a quick one. How do we, how do we know that Peter was a, a rich fisherman? How do we know that Peter was a rich fisherman? Hey? Do you know? How, how do we know Peter was a rich fisherman? Oh, by his net income. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> no problem. I'll only do one for today. Okay. Right, so if you join us for the first time today, we are on a six weeks series called Identity. And so we are on week four. The other weeks are online, so it is available. <laughs> it's, not, it's never too late. It's never too late. And you are here now, so which is great. Um, so there is, the other sermons are online on our YouTube channel, or, and so you can go check them out there. And so today we, we've, okay, let me recap. Right, so in the beginning we spoke about the, 
the new identity, right? The identity gap. Uh, there should be a slide for that one. The circles. Okay. So it should be coming soon. And so it's ident so we had this one circle was how we see ourselves and what we think the truth is. Here we go. Right? And so that's segment number three. That's our beliefs and what we think about ourselves. And then segment two is what God sees for us and what he thinks of us, right? And then this segment number one, that is where the two overlap. This is where I believe some of what God believes of me, right? So what we need to do is we actually need to get these circles to align more so that I can start to fully understand or fully believe what God has in store for me as a believer, right? But it's not an easy process. And so we spoke about that in week one. Okay, you can kill that slide. Thank you. And so then on week two, we spoke about I am a son, right? Remember, we spoke about sonship and being adopted into his kingdom, and which means that what his is mine, and, and you know what mine, not that I have much as his, but you know, he's, in, he's led us into his house, right? We've been adopted. And then week three, we spoke about I'm a servant. So Nikki spoke about being a servant in the kingdom because Jesus came to serve, right? And so that is why we also need to serve in his house. You know, can I, can I just honor Lindsay this morning in her absence? Okay, so Lindsay's not here. Um, Lindsay was not scheduled for worship team today, right? But Lindsay came in at 6 o'clock this morning to come help set up because she felt convicted to be here, even though she didn't have to be here because she, her daughter is in another church and so her daughter is doing something there today. And so she went to go support her daughter. But she was here at 6 o'clock this morning to come and help and set up, to come and serve. Come on. I'm like, I said, what are you doing here? She said, oh, I just felt convicted to come. I'm like, the Lord answers prayers because I was by myself this morning with B. B was in the kitchen and then Lindsay rocked up, which is yes. Right. And so today we are going to be looking at I am a saint. Okay. So on in your workbook, page 10, there is a place there where you can write in the some details you can make some notes right and so what i want you to do is at the top of your page i want you to write there i am a saint and in brackets and he is my savior right i am a saint and he is my savior cool are we there nice guys nice all right so <laughs> when we think of the word <clears throat> When we think of the word saint, right? Like Saint Patrick and Saint John and Saint Paul and all these saints, you know, we have a we have an image of this of this saint. Am I right? You find them at, at traditional churches. Can you put up that other picture for me, please? That guy. And it's coming now. There we go. So we usually have this image that we see, right? This is what we believe a saint looks like, more or less. They usually have something in their hands or they stand like this and they usually have a scepter or a sheep or something that they're carrying, and usually some beard action and some long hair, you know. And they, they typically look bored. Okay? It's like these old crusty guys that's been, you know, and so you'll find them in churches, windows and all kinds of stuff. And, and so thank you. And so that's the kind of image that we connect with when we think saint, Right? And so there's different saints, you can find them around. And, and so there's a guy also called St. George. And St. George <coughs> is a story of uh, George and the Dragon. Have you ever heard of that story, George and the Dragon? Yeah, yeah, it's a real thing. So it's a real story. So George finds himself in England, UK, and, and then he fights snakes and dragons, right? And, and uh, I'm like, yeah, I want to be that guy. You know, I want to be like kicking butt and taking names. I mean, like, ah, I'm the snake kicking, dragon straggling kind of guy, you know? And so, so we have all these perceptions of who and what a saint is. But can I tell you guys, well, let me say this. Where does this come from? Well, a thousand years ago, the church had this idea to say that we should honor those who are extremely holy, right? And we will we'll honor them by declaring them and making them a saint, which is cool. But there's a criteria, and if you listen to the criteria, it's quite intense. 
And so I'm going to start at the top. And so put yourself and see if you qualify, okay, according to the old churches. So number one, you need to have influence with people around you, right? Have you got influence? So it's not some guy sitting on a mountain humming his life away. He's in and amongst the people, having influence, taking care of them, you know, praying for them, and teaching and discipling them, right? That's influence. So are you, have you got number one? Are you still good with number one? You've got influence, right? Some of you may like, yeah, I'm, mm, influence for who? So it might be reality, okay? So, so that's criteria number one. Criteria number two, you must have done a minimum of two miracles that can be added to your name, all right? So you've prayed for somebody and they got healed, or you prayed for the dead to come alive, you know, or, or, or something grow back, some sort of miracle, but you needed two. Have you done that? And so you've even lost some more people. Phew. Okay, no, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still good. I'm still in for the running. Okay, so I'm, I'm still okay. Okay, so, which means, yeah, man. But yes, yes, uh, I think, <laughs> criteria number three, you must have been dead for five years. That, I'm out. <laughs> no, seriously, they're saying, they're saying they investigate a person's life. He need to have had influence in people. He must have done two, minimum of two miracles, and he must have been dead for five years. Based on that, we then declare him a saint. So, hey, how's that, guys? And so all of us are like out of the picture. We're like, okay, unless you're sitting here and you're a corpse for the last five years, I would like to chat to you about it. But I mean, yeah, that's the reality they had, okay? And so, and so generally, we think of, of the word saint, we think of it's for the, for the holy of holies. It's for the people that are extremely holy, right? And I mean, there's that saying that says, uh, uh, it says that, uh, let, me just, let me just grab my thoughts here. This is saying that says, I derailed myself. Oh, yeah. It's a saying that says, I, I, I'm no saint. You know, you know that saying, I am no saint. So can I put you into the picture? They say that a pastor and a policeman, their kids are the naughtiest little stuff that you can find. Yeah, it's me. I'm that guy. My, my parents were both in the police force, so I grew up that, that guy, you know, where the friends, the parents' friends says, if I catch you with a rack, if I catch you playing with them, you're dead. I was that guy. <laughs> All right, so, so which means I had no hope. I mean, there's just no ways. But oh, can I tell you guys, that is not what a saint is. Eh? We don't have to jump through that hoops and do all kinds of stuff in order to be classified as a saint. Come on. I wanted to go to to Ephesians 1 verse 1. And I think it should be in a book as well. Ephesians 1 verse 1, but also it's in your Bible. I know that for a fact. Ephesians 1 verse 1. It's in the front of the book. And so this is Paul speaking to the church in Ephesus, right? So he says, it will also be on the board. So it says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus and are fully in Christ Jesus. So here's the thing. Paul is writing the letter to the church, right, in Ephesus. He's saying to the saints in Ephesus. He's not writing to dead guys. He's writing to people that's alive and well, right? And so it says in Ephesians 1 verse 15, it says, For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. It's not dead people loving saints. It's alive people loving saints and it is the entire church. Right? It's not select few. It's for the church. He's writing it to the church. But look, look at this. Ephesians 2 verse 19. It says, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Come on. 2 verse 19. So, yeah, here's the thing, guys. The day that I decide that I'm giving my life to Christ is the day that I am clothed as a saint. Who's been, who's been saved here for five minutes? Who's been saved for five minutes? For five minutes. Who's been saved for two years? Who's been saved for five years? Right? 
irrespective of how long I've been serving the Lord, the day that I surrender my life to Christ is the day that He clothed me with the blood of Jesus and say, hey, I've got you, you are mine. And I'm a saint in Him. I'm a saint. I don't have to jump through hoops. It's not a matter of works, but it's a matter of relationship with Him. Come on, guys. But can I tell you that that same, the same Paul that wrote to the guys in Ephesus, right, singing their praises, further on, <laughs> there was sweet and sour. Sweet and sour. Eh? It says in Galatians, in Ephesians 4, verse, verse 31, it says, Get rid of all the bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander. The same guys that he said, yes, man, your faith is so good, and the fact that you're loving the guys is amazing. But then down the line, it's like, yay, yeah, you got to get rid of these things, and don't slander, and you're brawling. Why are you guys fighting? What's going on? He's talking to the saints, right? And then it says in verse, uh, Ephesians 5, verse 18, it says, And do not get drunk on wine. These are the same guys. He just told them, not yet, man, you guys are awesome. The report is great, but yet, the guys, there's some stuff there that we need to really work on. Eh? This gives me hope. Can I tell you? This gives me hope because it means that I don't have to be perfect. I can be a saint, but I can also be a work in progress. And the last time I checked, I'm definitely a work in progress. Yeah, I, I, I want to carry around that sign that says God at work, you know, or men at work. Have traffic cones around me so that people can just be careful what God's doing in my life. Seriously. And so God is with us, working through us, but we are saints in Him. Right? We don't have to jump through hoops. <laughs> and so there's a slide there that I want to show you guys. And we're going to be drawing some pictures in our book, right? We're going to be drawing some pictures. So you're going to be, you need a lot of space because there's going to be a lot of information we're going to be filling in there, okay? Uh, do I have some Picassos in here? Huh? Just checking some Picasso. Picasso? <laughs> okay? Right. So, so I want you to, if you can, draw this in your book, right? Birth, the cross, promotion. I want you to draw that in there if you can. There's a reason why we're doing this. Right? And so, so this is step one. This is the illustration that I want to show you guys. It's the fact that this is when I was born. Right? My natural birth. The normal way. Not the Jesus way. I wasn't there by miraculous conception. I was like, I'm, I'm my dad's child. Yeah? And so I was born here. Then this is where I surrendered my life to Christ by the cross. This is where I've surrendered myself and said, Father, I am yours. Jesus, you are Lord and Savior of my life. And then there is promotion. That's the day that I then leave this earth and I go to be with the Father. Right? That is, and you'll see that this line continues at the end. It continues. Right? So even if I'm promoted, it continues. Why? Because I'm going to have eternal life with God. Right? As I say. So listen to this. Now, the next slide, please. I want to show you this. Now we're going to add some numbers in there. Right? We're going to add some numbers. So you're going to write there one, two, three, and four. But now, you've got to go back. You're a bit too far. Another slide. One more. Yes, there we go. Right, so. So one, you're going to write BC. What does BC stand for? Before Christ. Right? And I, and I can honestly say all of us were here. All of us has been at BC. Am I right? If you have not been, please come and see me. I have a, I've got a few questions. All right? And then number two is we are forgiven. Number three, transforming. Right? And number four, transformed. Because what happens is, before Christ, I then get saved. I'm forgiven. And once I've been forgiven, now I am busy with my transformation. I'm busy becoming Christ-like. Because that is what the Bible is calling us to do. Right? And then when I'm promoted one day, then I'll be transformed into my new body. Huh? 
my glorification. The one that doesn't have issues, yeah? like a bad knee or an acne or any kind of knee you want. It's up to you, right? You can even have six pack here. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to look like in heaven. But anyway, and so, and so the next slide, please. So what does it mean? It says, if I have been forgiven, I have a new identity, right? I have a new identity, and part of that identity is the fact that I am a saint in his kingdom, right? I'm a saint. And then, at transforming, it says new ways. I am learning the new ways. I'm learning what it is to be a son in God's house. Because remember, I have been adopted into sonship. So I must understand that there's some rules and regulations, but there's also love. And I also need to deal with my stuff because sometimes we come into Christ, but we're still a bit of a rebellious teenager. Hey? I want to be saved, but I want to do things my way. And God's like, no. You need to, we need to work on your stuff here. Right? And then once I've been promoted... When I'm transformed, that means I've got a new body, a new body that God's got for me and you, which is amazing. Right? The next slide. So which means that, yes, I am a saint because I've been made holy. Come on. Now, transforming new ways, living holy. We are called to living holy. So we're learning, but we also need to start, hey, we need to start implementing that. We can't just learn the new ways, but we need to implement that. It's as good as I give you all the ingredients to make a cake, but you place all the ingredients on the table and that's where it lays. I give you all the knowledge. I even give you a YouTube tutorial in the language of your choice. And you take the ingredients and you put them on the shelf and expect the cake to be baked. It's not going to happen. We need to participate with Christ. That's the thing, right? And then obviously, guys, here by promotion, there's no sin. There's no sin. No temptation. No slander. No, no sickness. Come on. That, this sounds like a lucky place, I'm just saying. Huh? Huh? Luckily, it's not on timeshare. It's like permanent share. Right? Next slide. And so, these are the words I want you to get. I've been forgiven. It means I've been justified. Justified. Justified means just if I had not sinned. Right? Just if I have not sinned. Because God says He forgives and He forgets. Right? Your slate has been wiped clean. Even if it's permanent marker, you can take it away. Come on. So justified. Then, transforming, sanctified. Right? Sanctification. Sanctification. Becoming more Christ-like. That's what sanctification means. And then, after promotion, we're glorified. Glorified with Christ. For all eternity. I want to go now. It sounds lacquer. But we can't because we still have work to do. Right? So what I want you to do now, so, so, so if you see these words across in your Bible, you understand what they mean. You understand, okay, justified means I've been forgiven. That's cool. Transforming means, yes, I'm sanctification. And then glorification, glorified. But what I want you to do is I want you to draw a little stick man. Ooh, if you can draw a proper little guy, that's also cool. Somewhere on your timeline, where would you place yourself on that timeline? If, if you're placing yourself here at, at the end, also come and see me again. There's a couple of people I need to see. Okay, you can't be there. You can only be either here or you can be somewhere here. Where, where are you? Where would you put yourself? But also what we need to understand now this morning is the fact that 
from this point where my little guy is, where I've placed my little man on that timeline, there's three things that we need to do. Number one is we need to look back and give thanks. Because remember what we said, I am a saint and he is my savior. Come on. So we need to look back and give thanks to Jesus because I have been forgiven. I have a new identity. I am a saint and I'm justified. Right? You see, it says in 2 Corinthians 9, 15, it says, Thanks be to God for His incredible gift. Because that is what Christ was. It's an incredible gift. We cannot earn it. It's something that He just, out of love for us, is like, this is for you. It's yours. All you have to do is accept it, which is amazing. Then, the second thing we need to do, it's fine. The second thing we need to do is to look now, right? To look now. To become more like Him. So we look back and we give thanks. We look at now to become more like Him, to become Christ-like, right? In this journey with Him. And then Paul says in Ephesians 4, verse 22 to 24, he says the following. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self. Can you see it? It says, put off your old self, which is being corrupted by deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your mind, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Can you see it's three things we need to do there. The first one is we need to put off the old. Right? We need to put off the old. Okay? The second one is to be made new. And the third one is to put on. And that process is continuous. It's not a once-off event. I wish it was, but it's not. Because God reveals stuff in our lives, right? Just when you thought you're like, it's smooth sailing, clear sun, the waves are cool, and then God's like, yeah, yeah. It's like mushrooms that pop up overnight. It's like, where did they come from? It's a reality. I mean, I can honestly... Put on. Mm. So put off, made new, put on, right? So I can tell you many stories of my life. I mean, if some of you know my background, our background, drugs, <laughs> jail, uh, alcohol, adultery. You, you, you pick it. Yes, I've, we've been there. We've done that, right? And so we don't escape the consequences of what we've done, right? Because God comes and forgives us if we do certain things. But then we still need to walk out the consequence. But luckily there's grace and God gives us mercy. And so he makes it a bit better because we're partnering with him. But then you think that you've dealt with this one thing and then yeah, something else pops up. Like, where did that one come from? I can honestly tell you guys many times. I mean, at one stage I thought, okay, cool. I'm, 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 I'm on the road. I'm in the road. It's going well. Yes, man. I, I, I feel this is good. You know? It's been a couple of days now, and it's amazing. And then God's like, uh, pride. And then, you know, that, that you get poked in the back, it's like, pride. And then my reaction's like, what do you mean pride? Hey, Yo, Lord, no man, I don't have pride. Who me? No, I have pride. I have pride. <laughs> he had to repent and start working out and, and renewing my mind. Because that's what we have to do, right? We have to repent. Ask God for forgiveness. Lord, how do we tackle this? How do we get this right? And then start applying what God shows you in your mind and start walking out in the opposite spirit than what you were. Because you can believe me, you'll get tested. You'll get tested. When you think you've overcome something, you'll be like, all right, so let's just see how well you did in overcoming that. Come on, isn't it true? Yeah, it's true. I can tell you many stories. You see, David says in, in Psalm 51, verse 10, he says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. I mean, David got it. I mean, that guy, <laughs> David did all kinds of stuff, right? Adultery, murder, you name it. But yet, God loved him so much. And he's saying, Oh, Lord, create in me a new heart, a new heart. And so for many of us, we need to say, yeah, Lord, I need a 
a new heart this morning. I need, I need a new connection with you. I've messed up so many times. I've looked at stuff I shouldn't. I've spoken to people I shouldn't. I've done things I shouldn't. I've, I've neglected to do this in areas that I should have. Lord, I need a new heart. I don't want to be away from you. I need to be connected with you. You know, Abraham, Moses said to God, I, I don't want to go if you're not going with me. I don't want to go if you're not going with me because God's saying, go, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure you guys will be okay, you know, wherever you, I'll make sure that the angels go before you. And Moses is like, mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. the source, we need you. And it's the same thing with us because sometimes we get ourselves into a rut and into a space and then we sometimes feel distant from God because we created that little rut in our lives. And then we wonder, why is God ignoring me or why am I not hearing him? But meanwhile, we are so drowned out with what we're going through, our muck and our mire, that we need to say, Lord, create in me a pure heart. Humility brings honor. It's like, ah, oh, God, oh, sorry. Have it. And I've shared this with you guys before. God has told me many times, melt quickly, melt easily. Because if you don't, it's going to turn up the heat. And there's some of you in here that I think needs to hear that. We're God saying, I'm going to turn up the heat because you need to melt quickly. Because, you know, we are our own worst enemy sometimes. We can prolong our suffering in the wilderness. <laughs> Who feels like they've been marching for years in the same wilderness? Where you go, I've seen this tree five times. I'm sure I'm going in circles here. <laughs> Hey, it's a reality. God's saying, just repent. Get it in order. Come on, I want to partner with you. Let's get this stuff sorted out because you are my saint and I am your savior. Come on. And so then what we do is the last one is we look forward with hope. So remember, we look back with thanks. We look at now to become more Christ-like, but we look forward with hope, right? And it says there, Oh, guys, who likes running? I'll, I'll pray for you, and I'll also pray for you. And running, that's, I, that's like one of my nemesis. I, I try. The intentions are good. I, I committed to two days a week. That was two months ago. <laughs> it's, it's not going too well, okay? And, uh, but if you, if you run, and you're a runner, and, you, and you're doing marathons and comrades and all kinds of stuff, I mean, we know a lot of people that run, you know, they're good runners and stuff. But at some point, some point, you're going to get to a point where you need to start uh, motivating yourself, right? You start feeling cramps and stuff are going, you know, you can feel you're getting tired and you have to start motivating yourself. And how do we motivate ourselves? By saying to ourselves, there is a finish line waiting for us. There's a finish line waiting for us. But the best part is we've got people next to the side of the road going, you can do it. Come on. You can do it. You want some water? Yes, thank you. I actually want some water. Thank you. And so they're spurring you on, spurring you on. You can do it. You can do it. And sometimes you might fall down and get a cramp, but then people come and they help you with your cramps. That's the body of believers. Sometimes we fall down and then the church comes around and believes, how can we help you? What can we do? You've got this. God's got your number, man. Come on, what's your, your number 791. You can do this, number 791. You can do this, right? That is why God's knitted us into fellowship. That's why God has destined for communities, for church, the ecclesia. That's why we have this. So we can encourage one another, right? So we look forward to hope. Because for all of us, there is a finish line. Just like Paul says, he says, I have run my race. I have run my race. And so for us, it started when the signal gun went off. That signal gun is when we committed our lives to Christ. And we started running the race. But we run the race knowing that there is a finish line waiting for us. There is hope waiting for us. But we also run it knowing that there's people that is running with us, that's encouraging us. I can tell you a story. The one time, one of the very rare little races that I've done was with my wife and my uncle and my cousin and my brother-in-law. And we were into the running thing, which was short-lived. How, how, how long ago was that? Like 
It was a long time ago, eh? Yes, that's 2016. Sure, yeah. And so, but we were preparing for this race. It was a, it wasn't a far, it was 10 kilometers, right? You know, do you know how, 10, how far 10 kilometers is? It's like two times five kilometers. It's far. <laughs> and so we were running in a place called Pretoria, right? If you don't know Pretoria, there's some places in Pretoria that's got like extreme uphills and extreme downhills. It's like, and so we'll, we run, bah, and we're all running and we're all excited. It's like, and people are chirping one another saying, yay, look at your techies. And, and we're having fun, you know? But after three kilometers, we're chatting less. <laughs> it's less chatting. Becoming more serious, more focused. Someone's trying to chat to you. It's like, I'm just trying to breathe. <laughs> trying to find your rhythm. It's like hardcore, right? And then, and then but we, there's like a whole pack of people running together. And then we take this one corner and it's downhill. It was like, yes! And the people are celebrating, singing songs. Shaza, laza. And people are like, yes! And then we get down to the bottom and then there's a turn and then we see. <laughs> Who's going to heaven? <laughs> and then you hear the guys complaining. Oh, this is so hard. This sucks. And there's like, you know, people are trying to motivate one another on and stuff. And then you get to the top and you're like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they drag you like, come, come. And then we run, you know. And, so, and that was the whole way. There was about five of those atrocious uphills. I remember. But we finished the race. You see, we didn't run to win it because I knew we were going to win it. But we ran because we were committed to it. And we wanted to finish it. We wanted to do it. Did I run it again? No, definitely not. I learned from my mistakes. I melt easily. But was I proud with myself that I did finish it? Yeah, I, I don't know where my medal is now, it's somewhere. But it was a sense of achievement. But I can tell you, it was also because of people running with us, people encouraging us. That is the key. Because I had a number. I had a number, which means I was a contestant, which means I had to start and I had to finish. And we did. It was very muddy in between. Very interesting in between, but at the end of the day, I crossed that finish line. I think I crash landed that finish line. And so it says in, in, uh, it says in Hebrews 10 verse 23, it says, hold, let us hold unwaveringly to the hope we profess. For he, for he, was, for he who promised is faithful. The one that promised us is faithful. Let us hold on. Because he's not going to let us down. He's not going to let us fail. He is the one that we can trust and believe in. And so therefore we need to look back and give thanks and, and look at now to become Christ-like. But look forward in hope, knowing that one day we will cross that finish line. Amen. And so Charles Spurgeon writes, he says, All true believers. All true believers are saints while they are alive. All true believers are saints while they are alive. So I want you to look at the person next to you and say, Hello, saint. High five the saint next to you. Come on, let's say high five. Come on, you've got this. Yes. But I also want to say this morning that if you are on the timeline and you have not reached that space of justification, you have not reached the space of sanctification, then maybe that time is for you today, this morning. Because God's got a number for you. He's got a number for you. And He's got people waiting to run with you, to coach you, to help you so that you can finish your race as a saint.
And so let us bow our heads in. And so if, if that is you this morning, I want you to, no one's watching, I'll just slip up your hand quickly. If you need to make right this morning, you can slip your hand and I'll pray for you afterwards. I'm not going to put you on the spot this morning. But I also want to pray with the rest of us. I want to say, Father, Lord, thank you that you see us as holy, as saints. Thank you, Lord, that you've made a way for us to have eternal life. And Father, that you're with us on a daily basis, that you, that you care for us, that you carry us, that you wrap us in your love and in your arms, Father God, for the bigger picture. We thank you, Lord, that even though, yes, we laugh and we make jokes, but Lord, we understand that you are our everything. Father, without you, there is no hope. Without you, there is no destination. Without you, there is no plans and purposes for our lives. So Father, we, we thank you, Lord, that we can hold on to you, knowing <laughs> through you, Father. We have life and life abundantly. And so Lord, I pray this morning that if there's people right here this morning that needs to highlight certain things in their life, that needs attention, that needs confession, that needs repentance, Lord, I pray that you would highlight that, that you will stir them up so we can deal with it in Jesus' name. That we can deal with it in Jesus' name. Lord, because we were not meant to carry these things, but Father, we were meant to submit and to repent and to come clean and to be cleansed with the blood of Jesus. And so we thank you, Lord, for this time and for this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. For those of you who want to reconnect your life to God, we'll pray for you afterwards. Okay. Are you guys still out there? Are you guys still good? Come on. I need to stop saying come on. I'm actually threatening you. I need to say come on. It's an NCMI thing. All the guys at NCMI, come on. Yeah, come on. That was good. Come on. I, I picked that up. It's terrible. It's terrible. Okay, you're doing enhancements. Okay, cool. I just want to read the scripture. Uh, with regards to tithe and offering. So we never pass the box around. You know, generally we leave our tithe and offering box over there and there's a barcode. But just to teach on or remember why we give, 2 Corinthians 9 verses 6 says, Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your own heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves somebody who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. So it's such a good scripture to remind us why we give. And, and that when we give, we give because God does business with us, right? In nothing we own is from us. Everything is Him. Our time, treasures, and talents belong to Him. And so He's saying, yeah, and He's calling us to generosity, which means that we give more than, than what is required. That's what generous means. So He's saying, you, you let the Lord do work in your own life. And, he, and He's saying, those, each time we give, we're placing seeds in the ground to bring a harvest back into our own lives. And we're trusting Him. When we give to the kingdom, we trust in God that he can take care of us. That's what the scripture says. So, Father, we thank you that you've given us the ability to create wealth, that you're the one who provides for all we need. And I pray, Father, that each and every day, with our time, our talents, and our treasure, Lord, that it'll belong to you, that you can show us, Lord, what we need to give and how much, and that you bless and take care of each and every one of us in that place. You're a good provider, and we love you. Thank you for your provision. In Jesus' name.